Hey, trig functions of any angle, not just right angles anymore, but any angle. That's the difference between this section and 4.2 is that now it can be above 90 degrees. It doesn't have whatever. And so we have to kind of come up with a standard thing that we do so that we can all, like no matter who we talk to about these angles, we all know what we're talking about. And we can get to the same thing mathematically <laughs> correctly. And also there's some really neat things that work out mathematically if we do all put things in the same place. Yeah. So... Let's dive in, shall we? Yes, let's. Okay. So we have an angle is made up of two rays, an initial side and a terminal side. That shouldn't be anything new. Here's initials our, where you start, terminals where you end, just right. in case you're not sure on that. Right, and here is our initial side fish. Oh, I'm sorry, that's an alpha. Alpha, yes, yeah. alpha. Okay. And then for simplicity and trig, we put standards into, we put angles into standard position, which means the vertex, which is this little point right here, uh, is at the origin, 0, 0, mm -hmm. and the initial side is along the positive x-axis. So, so pointing off towards the number line that you've been using since kindergarten. We might as well keep it as simple as possible, right? Right, right. So right here on this, the 0 degrees is over here where this x is, because this is the positive x-axis, and then we, we just move the angle so that that's its initial side and that its uh, you know terminal, terminal side, side is wherever it needs to be. Right. So... Um, and then there's an example of a positive angle and a negative angle. How do I know if it's positive or negative? Here's how you know if it's positive or negative. If the angle that we're interested in is created going counterclockwise, you're going in a positive direction. Right. And if the angle you're creating is going uh, clockwise, that's moving in a negative direction. Now, having said that, on both of the examples here, even with a positive and a negative angle, we could get the other one for right. both of those. Right. And we're going to talk about that in a second, how angles really have multiple names that we could call them by. Multiple. Yeah. Uh, one thing that might help you remember which direction is positive and which direction is negative is back in the in the day, we learned about quadrants, like in Algebra 1 or oh, Algebra yeah. 2. Yeah. And this, we said, was the first quadrant. This one, we said, was the second quadrant, third and fourth, well, and at the time that might have seemed like a weird way of numbering our quadrants, but now hopefully it makes sense because if zero degrees is right here, our quadrants are coming around in the positive direction this way. Right. So that's one way that you can remember if you if you start to forget. Okay, so about naming those angles in 5,000 different ways, uh, basically an infinite number of ways, and that's what's called coterminal angles. Yeah. Um, so let's let's just look at kind of an example right here. We've got this angle, and it doesn't really matter what angle that is. Remember, we start at zero degrees. This along be, the x-axis, yeah, positive direction. Yeah. This would that would make this 90, 180, and then 270, and then oh, right here, if we keep adding 90, we would get 360. 360. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right here, this angle that's along the x-axis is 0 degrees, but it, we could also call it 360 degrees. Or 720. Because that's another whole revolution around. Right. And so that's what we're talking about when we talk about coterminal angles, is that we can have uh, different numbers, but them end up being in the same spot. They have the same terminal and initial sides. Right. So like this angle right here, which I think I attempted to make be 135. That's what it looks like to me, to okay. the untrained eye. We have 135 degrees, but then we could also talk about, well, what if we go all the way around the circle once and then come to this angle? So you could have 360 plus 135 exactly. and be in the exact same spot. So that would be 360, yeah, like he just said, plus 135. And so what we do is we get these questions where they ask us to maybe find a positive angle and a negative angle that are coterminal with whatever they gave us. Well, if I have 100 degrees here, mm -hmm. to get the positive one, we'd add 360 right. degrees. Which would be 460. Right, and it, then to get the negative... We could just subtract 360. It's all in, in 360s. That gets you to the exact same point on a circle every time. Right. So to do to do this, we added and we subtracted 360 degrees, and that gave us these two numbers. We could keep going, and we could find infinitely many more uh, you angles, know, as many as we wanted to, and just keep, just keep adding, adding and 360. Keep subtracting 360. Yep. How about this 5 pi over 6? Well, we don't want to necessarily mess with 360 anymore because now that's a really weird fraction to work with. Well, and this is in radians. And it's in radians. Yeah, and we've so we got to, to add a radian. Big, yeah, we've got to put our big boy britches on now and big girl britches. So let's talk about maybe um, what so, these are like in radians now. Yeah, we have let's do that. degrees. So let, let me just ask you this real quick. Um, 
what's the circumference of a circle? 2 pi r. 2 pi r. What if our radius is 1? So that's 2 pi times 1. Which is? 2 pi. Which is how far it's going to count on this particular so problem whole, as well. A whole circle is 2 pi. All the way around one time. So we're saying 2 pi and 360 are the same, which yes. if you use your conversion, you should find that right. that's true. Also, we said um, a while ago that 180 and pi are equal because that's how we convert anyway. So right. now that leaves us with what is 90 degrees in radians? Be pi over 2. Right, and the way you can think of that is to go from 0 to pi, this is halfway. Right. It's half, half, half of pi. Half of pi. Okay, and then this would be 3 pi over 2. 3 halves of the way right. around the circle. Well, around the circle, that's, never mind, forget I said that, that's confusing. Okay, so anyway, what do we need to add and subtract to find our angles this time? This, this time we're going to add and subtract 2 pi, which is the 360 degree equivalent in radian form. Right, because you could change this to degrees. You could. And add 360, subtract 360, but you have to change your answer back to radians, right. and that's a lot of work. So if we want to add and subtract 2 pi, uh, let's go ahead and get a common denominator for 2 pi. Let's make it 6. Let's, yeah, let's put a 6 on the bottom, which means we times the top by 6 as well, giving us 12 pi over 6. That's what we're actually going to add and subtract to 5 pi over 6. And this is going to be fraction adding like you did in 5th grade or whatever. It's no different, except now you're going to have a pi running around, and that is what looks different. But leave the pi in there. All the answers right now are not decimals. They're all pi's. And so when, when you're done, if you've got 5 pi's and you add 12 pi's, you have 17 pies. And that would be a great day if you had 17 pies. Yeah. Apple pie, pumpkin pie. Yeah, yeah. Pecan chocolate, pie. Chocolate, chocolate pie. pie. Oh, man. Lemon meringue pie. Negative 7 pi over 6. So there There's you go. Two, two There's angles two we're angles. going for. Right there. 17 pi over 6 and negative 7 pi over 6. Bingo, bango, bongo. Okay. Hey there, let's... uh. Check out evaluating some trig functions determined by a point in Q1. Q1, first quarter? Uh, quadrant. Oh. That's what we're talking about here, actually. We're talking about maybe money. No, we're talking about quadrants. Uh, Q1 is quadrant one. So theta is the acute angle in standard position whose terminal side contains the point four six. Find the six trig functions of theta. Let's draw ourselves like a little picture. You know, I'm just going to give a good rule of thumb here, I think. Always draw a picture, uh, especially with trig. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, if you don't draw the trig picture, life will be just brutal hard and don't draw the picture in your brain either like actually put it on paper so like that you can organize everything put it on your paper i i would say that this is the point four six okay so notice i went i went out approximately four and i went up approximately six and so we talked in 4.2 about how we draw the angle going down we draw mm -hmm. the triangle so mm -hmm. it goes down and meets the x-axis right makes this a, a right angle right and since x is our this way, then that means left that... Left and right. Yeah, left and right. Yes, left That's and right. That's four, and up and down would be six. And we get those numbers from this point because we had to go four out and six up. Brilliant. So we probably, since we need to find all six, we should probably find the hypotenuse. We're going to need that. So what is that called when we when we do that? What is it? Finding the hypotenuse? Yeah, what is that called? It's called finding the hypotenuse. <sighs> you are so helpful. Pythagorean theorem. Oh, that yeah. Dead guy theorem. 16 plus 36 gives us 52. I believe so. Equals C squared. Square root both sides. Now, don't square root both sides on your calculator either with these things. If no, you're asked to simplify. find all the trig functions, then you're going to simplify the square root of 52. Any answer given on something like this with decimal is not correct. Right. Right. We want, we want exact values, which means square roots or fractions or both. Square root of 52. If you're trying to simplify this, I know it's divisible by 2. Right. And so I'm pretty sure it's divisible by 4. So what you should do is take 52 in your calculator, divide it by 4, and you get 13. I think so. So this is... You could also do 52 divided by 2 and then divide it by 2 again. Right, right. You could do that as well. And basically, we can take the square root of 4, so we do. So that's 2. And we can't uh, with 13. So square root of 52 is 2 square roots of 13. That goes that's on this hypotenuse. side. Now we can find all six of our trig functions. So sine. And no, oh, oh, super important oh. now where that theta goes, though. Oh. Okay. Right? Okay. Like it has to be down there between yeah. the hypotenuse the and theta. the x axis. Yeah. We can't just right pick there. a theta anymore like no. we did early on, right? Yeah, yeah. This has to be it's theta. It's got to be right, right there. It has to be, okay. or it's incorrect. Okay. 
so and that tells us opposite over hypotenuse is 6 over 2 square roots of 13 and uh, we can leave it like that we yep. don't have to rationalize if you do rationalize keep in mind you only have to times by the square root you don't have to times by that 2 as well and if you do if you do times by the 2 that's fine you'll just end up having to simplify well and 2 reduces with 6 as well so that just makes it 3 oh, well I should have done that you, in the you first could do place. that too I should I mean, have probably but you didn't, and that's okay. Like, what, what, okay, there was no need to do that. Oh, well, I mean, I mean, I just, I wanted to, okay. So this is 3 square roots of 13. If you're not rationalizing, that's your answer. Right. If you are rationalizing, it's square uh, 3 square roots of 13 over 13. There you go. Okay. Bingo, bingo, bongo. And let's keep going. Okay, cosine is going to be the adjacent side then, which is the x-coordinate over the hypotenuse. 4 over 2 squared root of 13. 4 and 2 also reduce. They do, they do. 2 over the square root of 13. And you should be able to reduce those. Like, you need to be able to reduce yeah, 4 and 2. Yeah, like you should is a catch good that. call. Good call. Because sometimes it's really helpful to reduce. Especially in the long haul, yeah. Yeah, tangent, 6 over 4. Yes. Which is 3 halves. Right. Uh, even if you do... Rationalize. We're recording right now. Well, What's it's okay. Up? It's okay. Well, there's like fewer days between Thanksgiving and Christmas, so I thought I'm just going to start early this year. Okay. Yeah, but I'm not playing the music yet. Just, okay. just the lights. Just Elton John. Okay, yeah, just Elton John. Okay, sorry, it was Coach Offset. Um, remember, cosecant and sine go together. We flip, and this is the place where we should flip. Because flip, yeah, flip from the unrationalized the, part. The, the simplified yes. unrationalized yes. part. That's the easiest place to flip. Are you going to have to re-rationalize, and that's no good? No, that's a terrible, terrible thing to have to do yeah. on a daily basis. The only thing worse than rationalizing is re-rationalizing. <sighs> Because then you're re-rationing what you rationalized, exactly. and then it's a mess. Exactly. Okay, and here, like, let's uh, flip this one. The two-thirds. This is two-thirds. So, there you go. There you go. Six trig functions. Ooh. Down, baby. Example three. Evaluating trig functions determined by a point not in Q1. <laughs> Which quadrants are those? All the others. So, two, three, or four. Yeah. What does this change? That's what we want to look at. So, I'm going to draw myself a picture. Um, Look how straight my lines are. Those are the straightest lines I've ever seen in my life. Okay. Negative 4, negative 6. I feel like that's six. not quite perpendicular. <laughs> negative 4, negative 6 goes left 4 and down 6. So we're talking about an angle down here in quadrant. Third three, quadrant. Like this. Third quadrant. Yeah. So there's a point over here, this point negative 4, negative 6. And notice it's the same numbers, but now we've got some negatives going on. So we're basically looking at, all right, what does this change? Also... To draw this triangle. Connect to the x-axis, baby. Connect it to the x-axis. Never connect to the y-axis. Never. That's a terrible, terrible idea. Don't That's, do it. Yeah, connect, yeah. Go Draw up or draw down. That'd That's be like, the only options. If you connect to the y-axis, that's like something along the lines of Dr. Who not being able to solve a problem. I don't, he I don't he don't solves every problem. Yeah, I don't understand so, what you're saying right now because he always solves yeah, the problem. Yeah, so you can't. I mean, that's how you have to, it has to be that way. So theta is right here. It's this angle that is closest to the origin between the hypotenuse and the x-axis. Between the, between the what axis? I didn't hear you. Uh, the x-axis okay. and, and the hypotenuse. Every time. And then the negative four is our adjacent side. The negative six is our opposite, opposite side. side. Now, the angle we're actually talking about here is an angle that stretches all the way around. Mm. Okay, but what we're doing is we're using a reference angle, right? And we're just looking at this this specific triangle in this third quadrant. What happens is because we're including these negatives here, that takes care of the fact that we're actually talking about this angle that's bigger than whatever the that angle in our thing triangle is, here. is. Right. So um, that's kind of a an, a weird thing that it's like, oh well, it's neat that that works out that yeah, way. Yeah, works out. It works out perfect every time. So it's really important to make sure that all of your numbers are correct. Yeah, make, and make sure your negatives With are signage. there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we, oh, a hypotenuse on oh, this. Oh, so we we did this one last time, and oh. and make sure if you're doing this that when you square, you put in parentheses uh, because it, otherwise you're, you're actually squaring the number. 
negative 6, which means negative 6 times negative 6. Which and is positive 36. It, so. If you do negative 6 squared on your calculator, that will give you negative 36. And that's, that's not going to happen. Remember, when you're working with hypotenuse, that has to always be a positive number no matter what. It's a distance. It's a length. Like we have to have a positive hypotenuse. Absolutely. Every time. It was 2 squared to 13. I right? believe it was, yes. Okay, so our hypotenuse is 2 squared to 13. And notice that, or maybe you noticed, I don't know, maybe you don't. I, I can't tell if you can read that anyway. 2 squared to 13. That number will always be positive. Our hypotenuse will be. I just said that. Did you, you really? You just agreed with me when I said that. This, oh, I knew that. I totally, yeah. I was totally listening. Uh, opposite over hypotenuse is negative 6 over 2 squared to 13. Did you really just say that? Yeah, we can play back later. Okay, I'm sorry. I might as well not even sit over here. No, 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 please. You're, you're great. <sighs> negative 3 over square 13? That's what I probably already said also. No, I don't think you did. <laughs> now you're just being a big baby. <laughs> Cosine but it's the same theta. process, opposite over hypotenuse, okay? Yeah, and in this case, that opposite side is negative 6. Sign, S-I-G-N, is super important here. Right. Right. The sign of the sign is sign of the sign. That's going to be negative 2 over the square root of 13. Also negative because the S-I-G-N yes. is, is negative. Yes. Yeah. Tangent. Opposite over adjacent. Now pay attention here because something wacky happens. By wacky, do you mean the negatives cancel yes. out and it's positive? Yes. It's wow. If we go back to what we were just looking at a minute ago, the tangent is identical. Like if you pause your notes, rewind, and look at the tangent on the other problem, it's the exact same. Or if you look above where you're writing at the previous example. Yeah. Either way. Yeah. Like if you look in your notes, yeah. those are going to be the same. And that's true. Like what we just wrote down for you is a, that's a true thing. Yeah. Uh, so secant of theta, no, that's not what I write next. I write cosecant, sine and cosecant go together. Yeah, sine and cosecant. You were one step ahead of the game. Yeah, it was a close one. Cosecant theta. Flip this. Now when we flip, does that change the sign? The sign has to stay there. It's still a negative. The right. only thing we do is look at the reciprocal. Right. That's something that people tend to mess up on is they think when you flip it, you change the sign no, and you, you don't. No, you don't change the sign. Just reciprocal only. So same thing on the cosecant, or same thing on the secant. Square root of 13 over 2. Yes. That's a 3 right there. That's yeah, it's hard a three to tell. Yeah, 3 and a 2. And then cosecant theta. down here, theta, 2 thirds. 2 thirds. There you go. Now, um, at some point, maybe we should talk about the the quadrants. This, you know what I'm talking about? Like yeah, I know what you're talking sine, about. Sine, cosine, and tangent. Yeah, do you it, want to talk about that now or later? I mean, you're already drawing it, so let's, let's, do, it let's now. Just do it. Okay, so what happens is sine, cosine, and tangent which I'll represent with S, C, and T, mm -hmm. all three of those are positive in the first quadrant. Right. Okay, if you have an angle in the first quadrant, everything's positive. Everything's positive. Here in the second quadrant, well, if we look at, uh, if we think about what's going on here with a triangle, okay, we have a negative for our X and a positive for our Y. Okay, for a point that's over here, so would so sine, which is y over our hypotenuse, so positive. It's be positive. That sine will be positive, but cosine won't be positive because it's adjacent over hypotenuse. And the adjacent this time is negative x. Right. So right. a negative divided by a positive has to be negative. Right. And then our tangent would be negative because it's y over negative x, so that's a negative number. Right. Okay. So sine is the only trig function. Of the of the original three that is negative in the second quadrant. So, that is positive in the second. Yeah, quadrant. That, that's what I meant. That's positive in the second quadrant, and so is cosecant since they're reciprocals right, of each right. other. Right, but all the others uh, have a big old negative s i g m. On yes, them. on quadrant three, we did this problem right here. On quadrant three, um, tangent was the only one that ended up being positive. Right, and we just saw that one. So. Yeah. So in quadrant four, what's going to happen? is our x is positive, but our y is negative, and that means that... All the cosine stuff is going to be positive. Exactly, and there's a way to remember this, uh, because we have all in the first quadrant, we have sine in the second, tangent, and then cosine. Do you know this? All students take calculus. That's how I remember it. How do you remember it? Do you have a different one? Uh, mine was all smarties take calculus, but I mean... 
They can just be students if you want them to be. Okay, either way, if you remember that, you have A, S, T, C goes around in the quadrants. Those are the trig functions that will be positive in that particular quadrant. Yeah, there you go. So if we were like, hey, what trig functions are positive between 90 degrees and 180 degrees? You should be able to tell us. Exactly. Yes. I think we're done here. Okay, good talk. Okay. Hey, uh, more more trig function stuff. Uh, festive winter light version. <laughs> yes. So uh, let's say to be any angle in standard position, and let p of x y be any point on the terminal side of the angle except the origin. Whoa! No so, origin. So not zero zero, but any other point, we can let r denote the distance from p of x y to the origin. So r is kind of like a radius if we drew a circle. Yes. Yeah, maybe right. that's why they call it R. That's a um, genius. And so if that is the case, if we have a point out here x, y, and we have this line drawn, then we have a side of a right triangle that's x, a side of a right triangle that's y. So R would be basically, this is just the Pythagorean theorem. I, I feel like that's exactly what it is. It is. And so then we can say these things. Instead of using our Soka Toa or some old hippie or whatever, uh, we can now look at this as sine theta equals y over r because that's going to be the opposite side. Here, let me just write this. This is y and this is x and this is a right triangle. Okay. And this works no matter which quadrant you're in. That's the really cool thing. Right, because what we're using is actually a reference angle right here, which uh, let's call alpha since we've already got a theta. We're using this reference angle. Um, to talk about this triangle, but because, well, in this particular quadrant, like y would be positive and x would be negative, it takes care of the fact that it's actually a bigger angle right. than the reference Right, angle. it puts us right where we need to be with the appropriate side lengths. Exactly. So yeah. so we've got these these ratios here that'll help us out, and especially will help us with, uh, I would say, the quadrantal angles, probably. Which I, I don't even know. Is that like next. a tarantula, quadrantula? Quad quadrantal. Is that how you say it? Have you Quad ever heard of that word before? Quad that like a quadranaut? I think it's coming up pretty okay, soon. All right, Let's well, not ruin it. Okay. But if you if you want to refer to these at some point, it's basically the same thing as saying opposite over hypotenuse and adjacent over hypotenuse and all that. Right. Just it's no different. different. Right. But yeah. but it's this is going to be super handy for what's coming. So the quicker you can get comfortable with X's and Y's in these positions, the easier yeah. trig is going to be yeah. for you. Notice that S and Y go together. C and X go together. Alphabetical order, maybe? Yeah, yeah. If you put cosine and sine in alphabetical order, then X and Y are also in alphabetical order. And right. that, that's pretty important to get the hang of as well. So I agree. Let's evaluating trig functions using reference angles. Best of winter light version. Yes. Find the six trig functions of 225 degrees. Why don't we start by drawing ourselves a nice little picture? You know, I think every time we do a trig function, we should draw a picture. It sounds like a reasonable thing because we're talking about triangles and we don't have a triangle unless we draw a triangle. Now, what? where... <laughs> what did I say? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Remember, zero degrees is over here. Right. Puts 90 up here. Right. Uh, 180. 270 on the bottom. 270. Okay. That's going to be helpful because we need to figure out where is 225. 225 is halfway between 180 and 270. How do you know it's halfway? Because I did some math, like there's 90 degrees between it. If you half that, that's 45. and 180 um, plus 45 is 225. Uh, yeah, it just so happens that that is the case. So our angle is right here, 225-ish. And so what we're saying is that this angle to get around is 225. That's 225 degrees. Yep. But we're going to use reference angles, so that's not really gotcha. the angle that matters. No, it isn't. It's no. actually going to be how much further past the x-axis we went right. to we, get that angle. We want to draw a triangle from our the edge of our angle or somewhere on that line up to the x-axis. Yep, axis. that's what we want to do. Up to or down to the x-axis. Connect the x-axis and no other axis. Yes. So now if this was 225 degrees to get around, we went 180, and then we went 45 more, so this is a 45-degree angle. Now, I think there's some special right triangles that I feel we like, can use since here. you just drew the 45 in there, that yeah, yes, there yeah. are some special right triangles. I feel right like 4590 things. has 1, 1, and the square root of 2 for sides. I feel like what you're saying is correct. Okay, but we're not in the first quadrant here. We need to 
definitely account for anything that might be negative. I believe both coordinates in this case would be. Yes, because we went left and we went down. Yeah. Left and down, always negative. Okay, so now that we've put those negatives in, that's why we're allowed to use reference angles because right. the negatives account for the fact that we first went 180 degrees and then we went 45 more. Yes. So the six trig functions of 225 degrees. Uh, believe it or not, they're the same six trig functions as 45 degrees, but the signs are different. Right, so, so we've got opposite over hypotenuse. Which would be y over r. Right, right, If you whichever way you want to think of it. And normally with the special right triangles, we do go ahead and look at those rationalized. So would you say that's the case? everywhere typically write them like this. Yeah, Although you're not incorrect with two. 1 over square root no, of 2. They're, those are both acceptable yeah. answers. Yeah. Cosine of 225. This would be uh, x over r. x over r, so negative 1 over the square root of 2. Hey, which is again the exact same thing. That uh, should always happen with 45, 45, 90 triangles. Tangent of 225 degrees. Which would be y over x. y over x, which is negative 1 over negative 1, which means it's positive 1. What? Uh, yeah. What? Cosecant, ooh, cosecant theta. No, why did I put theta? It's 225. Uh, we totally know what it is. I feel like you wanted to color her. Uh, maybe. Flip sign. Flip from right here, so that should be negative Sh square root of 2. Yep. Secant negative square root of 2. Yep. And cotangent, which we flip 1, and it's, uh, it's, it's one. 1. That 1's an easy flipper. Right. And then we talked earlier in the video about how about all smarties take calculus or all students take calculus, and sure enough, our tangent was the only thing positive in right. the third quadrant. Negative divided by negative, tangent, always a positive. Tangent and cotangent. 